We all love stories, and our savior was a master storyteller. From fig trees and coins to sheep and big barns, he drew from ordinary things to illustrate principles about heavenly things. Join us for our fall sermon series, The Greatest Stories Ever Told, beginning September 6th. Pastor E and the ministers will be preaching through the parables in the Gospel of Luke every Sunday at 11 a.m.
Greetings, my Louisiana and Lake Charles family. This is Brandon Williams, your favorite counselor from Williams Counseling and Consulting, here with you just to share a few tips as we all try our best to overcome the devastation um, by Hurricane Laura. Uh, we utilize a acronym that's called Doing the Chuck, C-H-U-C-K, and it's inspired by our great city, Lake Charles, and it, each letter gives us something that we can pull from in order to find wellness at times. The C stands for caring for yourself, right? And so it's difficult to pour love into anyone else if you aren't pouring love back into yourself. So making sure that it's vital to care for yourself. The H, healthy coping skills, right? We want to make sure that we're taking care of our mind, our bodies, and our spirits, eating right, um, exercising, sleeping well. All of those things should be intact and avoiding some of those more negative coping skills uh, like drinking or drugging. All of those things can oftentimes exacerbate or make mental illness worse over the next few months when we add in the level of trauma that we've all experienced. And then the, the U stands for unplugging from the different media outlets, whether it be television or social media, for those that are straight flipping through YouTube continuously, it's okay to unplug to give the mind, the body, and the spirit a chance to recuperate. And then the C, counseling. It is vital that sometimes mental illnesses are bigger than what we can control. Make sure we're including and knowing when to include professional help uh, to help family and friends. And then the K, knowing that God has is still in control and hasn't left us alone. We can't lose faith, Louisiana. We will get through this. Knowing that he is God and he has not left us alone will help us maintain and continue to be Louisiana strong. One of the most difficult things to do is find yourself in a storm. And while in that storm, it seems like everyone who you thought you could count on has, has walked away. And sometimes it seems like even God himself has forgotten about you. But in spite of that, to still be able to lift your hands and say, Lord, I trust you. I surrender to you So many painful thoughts Travel through my mind And I wonder how I will make it through this time yeah. Without trust It's not easy Lord, it's not easy Sometimes the pain in my life Makes you seem so far away can make it. Well, God bless your family. I want to take a moment to tell God thank you uh, for each and every one of you joining us on this Wednesday night. Amen. And what a uh, beautiful Wednesday night it is. Uh, family, take a moment. Check in. Uh, like this video. Love this video. Comment. Check in. 
uh, and then share this video now. Amen. I tell God thank you again for each and every one of you, our members. I love e I love you all dearly. And then to all of our visitors, thank you for studying with us on tonight. Let's take a moment and have a word of prayer. Lord, you are good. We tell you thank you, O oh God, for your comfort, for your grace, um, for your mercy, O oh God, for your faithfulness, O oh God. Um, for this, Lord God, we know we can't repay you, but we do say thank you, Lord, right now. Now, Lord God, as we uh, just come to have a moment of study together, O oh God, I pray that you would bless everyone watching this video, O oh God, everyone who is watching now and will watch, those on YouTube, those on Facebook. Lord, bless right now in the name of Jesus. Meet your people at the point of their needs. And while our needs are great, our God, you are greater. And so, Father God, we give you all the praise and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. My Heavenly Father's children said, Amen. Amen. Well, family, we have finished the book of Acts, and on tonight, we are going to do a little quiz. Amen. We're going to have a little quiz. A, a little recap and this is all in fun hey amen I'm not going you're not going to lose your membership over uh, over getting these questions wrong all right hey amen uh, you don't get no you don't get brownie points hey amen for getting them right either hey amen hello somebody um, but we are just going to do this in fun just to recap the book of acts um, that we had on over the past year or so we've been in the book of acts and we finished that on last week so today we have 25 questions that we're going to go over just a little recap uh, of the book of Acts and it's going to just pretty much come cover the entire book of Acts. Now you can download your quiz right now. You can download your quiz right now at our website. That website there on your screen. Download your quiz and follow along um, and we're going to try to answer these questions together. Amen. And so and so uh, we're, we're going to do that now. So download that. Hopefully you have that downloaded. Um, so let's jump into this joint now. Amen. Let's jump into it. Question number one is, uh, who was uh, who was uh, the book of Acts addressed to? OK, who was the book of Acts addressed to? What answer uh, do you have on that? Here's the select. Here's the answers that you can select from. Was it uh, addressed to Theophilus? Was it addressed to Pilate? Uh, was it addressed to Caesar? Or was the book of Acts addressed to Peter? Take a moment, put your answer in. Uh, if you want to, you can comment your answer in the post now. You can comment your answer on the broadcast right now. Who was the book of Acts addressed to? Well, if you put Theophilus, then you are correct. Amen. The book of Acts was addressed uh, to, to Theophilus. Amen. I don't want you all cheating and looking uh, up the scriptures. I want you to try to do this from your mind. Amen. And also you can't do, uh, excuse me. <coughs> and also you can't do, you know, the whole abacadabra thing. You know, you just put uh, A, B, A, A, B, you know, abacadabra and, and trying to get them right. Question number two is who took the office formerly held by Judas at the end of the first chapter of Acts? You select from Stephen, Barnabas, Matthias, or Philip. What's your answer? Put your answer in uh, the comment section or in the chat right now. Who was uh, who was the um, the one who took the office of Judas that that, that betrayed Jesus? If you put uh, C or Matthias, then your answer is correct. Amen. That answer is correct. Question number three is what Jewish festival was was occurring at the time the Holy Spirit appeared in the chapter second chapter, giving the disciples the ability to speak in tongues. What festival was going on at that time? What was the festival? The answers that you have to choose from is Passover, Shavuot, uh, Purim, uh, or the Feast of Tabernacles. Which one did you put? Well, put your answers in the comment section in the chat right now. If you put Shavuot, then you answered correctly. Now, that was a little trick question because uh, many of us know it as Pentecost. Amen. But Pentecost, Shavuot, those are the same things. Amen. So Shavuot is the answer. That is um, that is the, the festival of 50th. Amen. That's 50 weeks uh, after the 50 days after Passover. Amen. Uh, question number four in, chap in the third chapter of Acts. Peter and John were involved in the healing of a man by what um, by what uh, a man by what was called the beautiful gate of the temple. What was the man's problem? 
what was the man problem what was his his ailment right was it lameness leprosy blindness or deafness which one was it which one was it let me tell you that if you put blindness then you answered incorrectly amen <laughs> <laughs> thought I was, yeah, I thought Pastor was making a mistake, right? The answer is lameness, amen. The answer is lameness. The first, the first one. Um, number five says, "What sin did Ananias and Sapphira commit? What sin did they commit?" According to Acts five one through eleven, was it they stole from the communal treasure, they lied to the Holy Spirit, persecuted Christians, failed to pay taxes? Which one was it? If you put they lied to the Holy Spirit, then that is correct. And that's one of those scriptures, family, that is an apologetic scripture. It's in the scripture that we use for a defense for the personality of the Holy Spirit. It's one of those texts that equates the Holy Spirit with God. In that text, Peter says, you not only lied to me being a man, but you lied to God. And then he said in the next verse, you lied to the Holy Spirit. And then he also says, "You speaking of the same, Holy Spirit he uses the personal pronoun he amen he and in that text we get so much of our understanding of who the Holy Spirit and uh, in according with other scriptures that he is equal with God amen that he is God that he is not a person that he is not a uh, impersonal force but a person amen uh, we see that in that chapter as well Number six says, what member of the council judging the apostles stated, let them alone for if this plan or under or this undertaking is of man, it will fail. But it is if it's of God, you will not be able to overthrow them. Who was it? Was it Caiaphas? Was it Gamaliel? Was it Annas or Joseph or Joseph of Arimathea? Which one was it? Which one was it? What answer did you put? Put it in the chat. Put it in the comment. Do it now. Do it now. The answer is Gamaliel, amen, Gamaliel, Gamaliel. Number seven, what controversy at the beginning of the sixth chapter caused men to be specially chosen to care for the widows? This was the beginning of the deaconhood. At what uh, point or what was the issue that caused deacons to be recognize the need for deacons amen for the need for elders uh in, in the in the call of governance what was the reason was it because the disciples were neglecting the preaching duties was it because the hebrew widows were being neglected was it because the hellenistic widows were being neglected or was it because money was missing from the farm which one was it well if you put the Hellenistic widows were being neglected, you are correct. Amen. The Hellenistic, that is, the Jews who were uh, of Greek background, the Jewish, the Jewish people who were um, not necessarily, uh, not necessarily of the same background or of the uh, uh, the Hebrews. Amen. These were those who were uh, Greek speaking uh, Jews, those who were uh, ingrained in the greek or roman culture of that day number eight number eight says uh, how did how did stephen die at the end of the seventh chapter of acts remember stephen was one of the uh, first deacons of the church and he on he went on to a point where he began to preach and he gave that fiery sermon uh so 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 great was that sermon that those uh the bible says couldn't even answer him a single word amen amen couldn't answer him a single word and that's how you and i all should be when it comes to our ability to articulate what we believe and give a defense for the gospel amen we ought to be able to know why we do what we do why we believe what we believe who is jesus who is God, uh, the Trinity, all of these different things. Amen. And the Bible says, well, well here's your, your, your options. Your options are crucifixion uh, by the sword, drowning, or stoning. If you put stoning, you answered correctly. Amen. Stoning. Uh, number nine, who offered to pay Peter and John for the gift of giving others the Holy Spirit in the eighth chapter? Was it Priscilla, Ananias, Simon, or Candace? Put your answer in the comment section now. Uh, this was the man that who was a sorcerer who you know had this you know this faking he faked all the people out had them thinking that he was some kind of great man and he wasn't and when he saw the ability that Peter and John had through the power of the Holy Spirit he tried to buy it it was Simon anybody remember as a bonus what Peter's response to Simon was anybody remember what his response to Simon was 
it was to hell with you and your money. That was, that's, that's literally what he said. To hell with you and your money. Amen. Now, number 10 says, still in the 8th chapter, who explained a passage from Isaiah to an Ethiopian eunuch? Who was it? Who was it? Uh, was it John, James, Peter, or Philip? Who was it? James, James, uh, John, Peter, or or was it Philip? Um, the, if you answered Philip, you are correct. He is another deacon of the church who God used mightily to begin to preach the gospel. Amen. And he was a great influential uh, person uh, in the church. Amen. Them deacons were holding it down, right? Uh, number 11, uh, on the road to Damascus, suddenly uh, Saul suddenly saw a light and was confronted by a voice. Finish this quote uh, from Acts 9 and 4. Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting blank? Why are you persecuting blank? Is it the truth? My people, me, or my church? Which one was it? Which one was it? Put it in the chat or the comment section. The answer is me. The answer is me. And that's something that you and I need to remember that when uh, we are, uh, when the enemy is opposing us, he is opposing God. Amen. When anyone is coming against the church, they're not coming against the church itself. They're coming against God. Jesus says, what you do to, to my people, you are doing to me. Amen. Uh, number 12, what was what was not true about the disciple Tabitha? Tabitha, when she was mentioned in Acts chapter 9, 36 through 43, was it uh, she was raised from the dead? Uh, was it her name is translated Dorcas? Was it she was Peter's sister-in-law? Was it she did a lot of charitable, charitable, charitable works? Which one of these is not true about this disciple Tabitha? Well, if you answered she was Peter's sister-in-law, you answered correctly. She was not Peter's sister-in-law. She was raised from the dead. Her name was translated Dorcas, and she did do a lot of charitable works. Amen. Amen. Number 13, what vision did God give Peter before he met Cornelius in the 10th chapter? Ah, if you, your options are unclean animals, the city of Rome, the man calling, or stars in the sky. I just wanted to... When I thought about that particular text, you could preach that text all day, right? Um, and you remember there was a sheep that was let down from heaven. And when the sheep was let down from heaven, it was a bunch of what? Unclean animals in the sheep. And there God says, Peter, kill and eat. And Peter said, not so, Lord. There's many of us using that that conundrum of language, not so, Lord. If he's your Lord, how dare you tell him, no, I'm not going to do it, right? And God says, what I have called clean, don't you dare uh, call unclean. Number 14, Peter, uh, Peter, I'm preaching this quiz, ain't I? Y'all see that, right? Uh, number 14, Peter says, uh, how did Peter get out of jail when Herod imprisoned him in chapter 12? How did he get out of jail? Was it he was found innocent? The jailer forgot to lock the door. An angel let him out or was there an earthquake? We do remember that there was somebody who got out of jail as a result of an earthquake, right? We do know someone who, who did that. However, it was not this case with Peter, amen? That was Paul and Silas. That was Paul and Silas. And so the answer is an angel let him out. An angel let him out. Number 15. Who was Saul's first missionary companion? Was it Matthias, Apollos, Barnabas, or Silas? Which one was it? Which one was it? If you put Barnabas, you answered correctly. Amen. Barnabas was Paul's first missionary companion. Amen. Number 16, at Lystra, uh, Acts 14, 8 through 20, which God was Paul mistaken for? Which one did they mistake Paul for because of the miracles and things that he did? Was it Hermes? Was it Hermes? Was it Apollos, Zeus, or Poseidon? If you answered Hermes, you answered correctly. Number 17, what practice was discussed at Jerusalem, at the Jerusalem Council in, in uh, chapter 15? Uh, was it charity, baptism, circumcision, or communion? You remember they were arguing about those religious rites that they feel, felt like uh, that those who were non-Jewish needed to do in order to be Christian. This is an answer that we all need to remember uh, that we realize that it was not circumcision or baptism or giving or communion. None of those things can save you and they were having a conversation. But in that particular text, they were talking about what? 
circumcision. Amen. And Paul telling them that great statement about uh, it's, it's the heart's circumcision that matters. Amen. It's your heart being right with God and not your outward appearance or um, religious behavior. Amen. Number 18, Paul had a dream in Acts 16, 6 to, 6 to 10 uh, about a man begging for help. Where was this man from? Where was this man from? This is one of those great texts that we teach about and we learn about the, discovering the will of God for our lives, right? Uh, where Paul, he tried to go one way, but he couldn't go. Uh, he found, uh, you know, a blockades, obstacles, or closed doors, and we discovered that sometimes in God's permissive will, or God, we talked about God's permissive will, permanent will, and we also talked about how when it comes to God's will, sometimes we just have to make decisions. And then there's times, there's times where when we see those closed doors, instead of viewing those closed doors as simply closed doors, view them as God directing our path, right? And so we saw that Paul had a dream of a man asking him to come to Macedonia that's the answer Macedonia amen number 19 why was Paul's spirit provoked within him while he was waiting in Athens Acts 17 uh, and 16 was it a slave girl followed following him everywhere was it because the city was full of idols was it because the Jewish officials tried to have him arrested was it uh, because people demanded he heal them if you remember it was the city was free, was was full of idols. You remember they had an idol to every god, and then they had an idol with a description, the unknown to the unknown god, just in case we miss one. And Paul says to them, brethren, I perceive that y'all are very superstitious. And the translation of that is, uh, I perceive that y'all are very spiritual or religious, right? And there's somebody, many people today, they claim to be spiritual, amen, but they don't know the this unknown God, this God, this Trinitarian God, that's the God that they're missing. You can be as spiritual as you want to, but if you don't know Jesus, you are headed in the wrong direction. Amen. Verse, um, I was going to say verse 20, but not verse 20, but number 20. Amen. Number 20. In chapter 19 of Acts, Demetrius of Ephesus felt threatened by the gospel. What was his job? You remember the Bible talks about this man that gave Paul so many problems. He caused Paul so many problems. What was his um, job? Was he a soldier, a carpenter, a silversmith, or a priest? Which one was it? He was a silversmith, a silversmith. All right, question 21. Where in Jerusalem was Paul seized uh, in chapter 21, where was he seized? Was it at the temple, uh, by the palace gates, in James's house, in the Garden of Gethsemane? You remember they, they just had enough of Paul. At this time, they were going to try to bring uh, charges to get this man killed. This was the beginning of all those series of trials of injustice and things that he went through. Which one was it? It was at the temple. It was at the temple. Number 22, who warned Paul about the plot against his life as found in Acts 23 and 16? Was it a Roman tribune? Was it his nephew? Was it one of the chief priests? Was it a servant girl? If you answered his nephew, you answered correctly. Amen. You answered correctly there. Number 23, why was Paul ordered to appear before Caesar in Acts 25? Was it because Felix, the governor, could not make a decision? Was it because the Jews lobbied to get him out of Judea? Was it because Caesar personally asked to see him? Or was it because he appealed to Caesar? Which answer do you have correctly? Well, we, we, we know that it's not the first one, Felix, because Felix knew he was innocent and yet he wouldn't release him, right? Many of those leaders were like that. They, we saw the injustice and we talked about the injustice that happens even today that people, you know, that, that they would rather play favoritism with people's lives, right? That they, knowing that something is wrong and something is unjust and yet they allow it. And so we saw, um, that, 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 that Paul languished in prison for some two years because of the indecision and unwillingness of these leaders to take a stand against injustice. And so if you put, he appealed to Caesar, then you answered correctly because even though he may have gotten off he, he you know he may have gotten off he still ran the risk to fall into the hands of the jews through the um uh, the, 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 the 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 hit that they put on his head they they hired someone to kill him amen 
Number 24, where was Paul shipwrecked? We just talked about this a few weeks ago. Where was Paul shipwrecked in Acts 27? Amen. Was it Cyprus, Malta, Sicily, or Patmos? Where was it? Where was it? Where was it? It was Malta. It was in that place where those uh, foreigners, those strangers were, where he was building the fire and the snake bit him. And the Bible says he shook that thing off and they thought he was a god. Malta is the answer. Here's the last one. Number 25, where was Paul at the end of the book of Acts? Where was he in the end? Of, was he in Spain, Corinth, Jerusalem, or Rome? Where was he in the at the end of the book of Acts? Well, he was in Rome, that place where he always wanted to go. He always wanted to go to Rome, didn't know how he was going to get there, but he got there in chains, amen? But yet, he was able to preach the gospel and do so much effective ministry for the two years that he spent there uh, in Rome. So here's my question, family. How did you do on the recap? How did you do on the recap? Um, if, uh, let us know in the comment section. We want to know. We want to know how you do. Did you get all of them right? I, I, I have to admit, I, when I took the quiz, I got all of them right. Amen. Um, and that's because we I study. I was paying attention in class. Amen. How many of you got uh, got all of them right? How many of you got? How many of you missed one? Put it in the comment section. Put it in the comment section. How many of you missed two? Right. Uh, how many of you got half of them right? <laughs> amen 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 all in fun family thank you so much for joining us on tonight listen i'm looking forward uh, to next week on next week reverend smith is going to introduce a new book of the bible uh, to you i'm so excited about this because we this is what we do as a church we study the word of god together we've gone through the book of philippians then we went to the book of to the gospel of mark and then we went to the book of Romans and then uh, we went to the book of Acts. Uh, we've also studied on Sunday morning the book of Joshua, the book of Judges, the book of Ruth. Uh, and that's what we do, right? We just go through the word of God and we study the word of God verse by verse uh, just to have a knowledge and understanding of the word of God. Not to, you know, not to say, hey, we studied the whole Bible, but that's because who we are. We are disciples of Jesus Christ. That is that upreach component of our of our vision and our mission that's no matter who we are or where we are as it pertains to our spiritual maturity we all have some upreach that we need to do amen so on next week Reverend Smith is going to introduce the book of Ephesians to us and we're going to take our time and really dig into that book to learn more about who we are in Christ amen Listen, family, do me a favor. Uh, I, I want you to share this broadcast. I want you to share this broadcast now. And then also share the flyer for our outreach on this coming Saturday. We want to reach out to our neighbors and to you, our members. If you have a need, please meet us uh, at the Rock Center. We're going to uh, be setting up about 8 o'clock. And we're going to begin distributing resources to our members and to our community uh, at 10 o'clock. Uh, you can just drive through. Uh, that drive through at the Rock Center and we're going to try to get you some resources to help you get through this season. Amen. We tell God thank you for each and every one of you. We love you and God bless you. Before we go, before we go, uh, family, just let me say how much I love you. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your patience with us. Please, family, be patient with your church. Be patient with your leaders. We're doing our best to make sure that we can care for your needs, be there for you. Um, but all of us, remember that all of us are in this season together. And none of us are God. None of us are infallible and unaffected by uh, the times and the culture and the problems and obstacles. All of us have those issues, right? So so please be patient one with another, even with your church. Amen. And we just tell God, thank you. We'll get through these technical difficulties, hang up obstacles that we have from time to time. We'll get through them. Amen. And we'll get through them uh, together. So family, I love you again. Let me pray with you again now. Lord, you are good. Thank you for your faithfulness, your goodness unto us. We give you praise. We give you glory, God. It is in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. All my heavenly father's children said, amen. God bless your family. We'll We'll see you next time.